Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial about character switching. This was voted for by patrons for the month of November. So thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel over on Patreon and voting for this video. Now this is going to be in two parts at least and we're going to go through and talk about how to do character switching when you've got multiple playable characters next to you in the game itself. So let's go ahead and take a look how we manage this. Okay, so we're starting off here in the third person template. And the first thing we need to do is create the multiple characters that we need to switch between. So I'm going to go into my content browser and just go into my blueprints. And a third person character here, I'm going to make children of this one. Uh, so we make this like the parent class of all of them. And I'm going to create a child here. And we'll just give them a character A, for example. And then do another child character B. And we'll do a third one for character C. And help us differentiate them between each one. We're going to create a different material for each one. So I'm going to go ahead and give them different colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to element zero on the material of the mesh and go to the folder of it. And I'm just going to duplicate that and open this one up. And we're just going to tint it a different color. So we'll go for a red. And we'll give character A our red one. Okay. Um, right, now I'm going to go to duplicate another one of those. Just duplicate that. And this one will change to be blue. And do it one more time for our green one. Okay, we we'll close that, and then I'm going to go to the characters I've got, and assign them to character B. We're going to choose our blue one. Close that, and then character C. Select our green one. That way we know what who's who. It makes it a bit easier to tell. Right, so each one of these is a playable character. Okay, so what we need to do is manage where and who we are controlling. So I want to put in uh, character B and character C as well. And we'll start off as spawning as character A. So I'm going to change the player start here to tell us in our game mode in the world settings. I'm going to change the game mode to say spawn as character A. There. So when I push play now, I'll spawn as character A and there's B and C standing right behind me doing nothing. So there's our three characters. As I said, we've got to manage the rotation of which one we're selecting and which one we're changing to. So that's all handled by the player controller. You want the player controller because that's central to all three characters. It's something that they all share. They will always have the same player controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own player controller because this game mode doesn't have one. So we're going to go ahead and create one. So we've got a different class and we choose player controller. And we'll just call this one Character Switching Player Controller. And in that controller there, we are going to go into our event graph. And we first of all need to collect up who are our characters, who, who's going to be on our team. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put in here on the variables... Uh, character uh, roster, we'll call it. And this is going to be an array of those third person characters. So third person character is the parent class. So if I choose that, it means that I can now set all those other three as well. And as I said, we're going to make it an array. So it's a list of, of them. And it's an ordered list as well, because so we'll make it cycle through each one. And we can do that with an ordered list a lot easier. So we need to populate this array. Um, it's empty at the moment. So on begin play, we need to fetch that information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, get um, all actors of class, and I'm going to choose the parent class of our characters, so the third person character. And then this out actors here, we can now set to 
the out actors there. So now I've got the roster and begin play being stored. That should give me my player character and the other two standing behind me. Next, we need to tell our game to uh, be able to cycle between each one. So what I'm going to do is it's all handled by what we call possession. So a player controller possesses a pawn, which is what the characters are. And we just got to simply just change which one we're possessing. But in order to do that, we need to manage which one we're currently looking at. So on the variables then we're going to have the uh, keep track of the current character. So current character. And that won't be an array. That'd be just a single one. Like that. As so I begin play, we get the character roster. And then we need to populate the current character. And the way we do that is we're going to get possessed. Uh, no, what's it called? Uh, get player character. We have to do get player character. Be fine. Um, and then from that, I can then cast to our third person character and assign that to our current character there. Okay, so we've got our list. We've got our current one. All good. Next, I need to know um, how to. I want to switch between each one. So I'll make a simple key in here to do this. I'm going to do the tab key. And let me find a key for tab. Somewhere in here. There it is. And I'm going to make this call a function to cycle to next uh, character. So functions, new function, next character. And we go back to that tab and we're just going to plug next character onto it. There. So inside the next character function, we need to know which character, uh, which index the character is currently at, and then increment it. So we're going to need to find first of all the index. We do that by getting the array and then doing find item and we're putting the current character. So this will return the number that we're currently on. So uh, ideally, the first one will be zero. Um, and then if I increase this number here, that will then go to one and that allows us to get the next one and cycle through. So this will return whatever number in that array that we've currently sit at. So what I'm going to do for the next character then is I want to add one to this one. I don't want to increment it because we may not need to keep it at that value just yet. So I just want to add one to it and check to see if the character roster array is valid with that index. So is valid index. So when we reach the end of the array, the end of the list, we want it to circle back around to the start of the list. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drag out the, um, if, uh, I'll do a local variable actually to be easier. Uh, local uh, index, we'll call it. And that'd be an integer. And so I'll set that at start here to this find. And then um, I'll drag it out again to set over here. And what I'm going to do, if that is true and it's valid, I want to just keep this value here. So I'm going to drag out select int and plug in the condition, which is the boolean. And so if it's true, it'll pick the A value. If it's false, it picks the B value. So if it's true, that's fine. We can keep that value in. So I'll plug that in from the plus. If it's not fine and it, it leaves the uh, valid uh, range of the array we want it to go back to zero so leave b at zero and go to local index so now we've got that i can now drag out my character roster and now i can set to possess a particular one so i need to get a copy of the reference to the character and then i'm going to do possess and plug in the possessed pawn Okay, and once we've got that, we need to then set the current character to the one we found. Man, I can actually disconnect that, but then there. No. So we don't have to worry about the camera because when you change possession or something, by default, it will automatically change the camera to whatever it is that you're possessing. So now we're keeping track of that information, we can test that out. Uh, make sure you go into your wall settings and change the character controller here to your character switching uh, player controller. And now, when I'm in the game, I can hit tab and go to the next character. Hit tab again, and again, and again, and again, and again. 
So there we've got a basic character switching going on there. So there you go, we can now switch between characters. Although they don't really move, we can now handle switching. So what we're going to do in the second part is we're going to make them move and chase you, and well, follow you at least, um, when they're not being possessed by the player character. So if you want to check out that video early, you head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find that video before anyone else from just $1 a month. So thank you to all my patrons for supporting and voting for this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.